Sagar, what's on your radar today? Well, Colin, Crystal's out today, so of course it's time for as many UFO segments as I can fit into a show. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. I was inspired to do this segment because I really do believe that this week is a turning point in the discussion of my very favorite topic. 60 Minutes produced a bombshell special on Uf UFOs featuring interviews with Commander David Fravor, his wingman, many others who testified to extraordinary observations of unexplainable vehicles observed in flight. Now, the only downside I find in discussing UFOs is that there seems to be an intense animosity within the community amongst different personalities, amongst the debunkers, and many more that detract from a very simple fact. I believe that Lou Elizondo, who was in charge of the DOD's program investigating UFOs, put it best on 60 Minutes. Imagine a technology that can do six to 700 G-forces, that can fly at 13,000 miles an hour, that uh, it can evade radar, and that can fly through air, and water and possibly space, and oh, by the way, has no obvious signs of propulsion, no wings, no control surfaces, and yet still can defy the natural effects of Earth's gravity. That's precisely what we're seeing. There's something that's been observed by both humans and by our technology, capable of flying in a manner unknown to human science. That's about as extraordinary as it gets. To me, the only question is, what is it? But increasingly, I have observed a backlash to what I'll call the mainstreaming of UFOs. Why now? Why is the Pentagon coming forward? Is this some sort of psyop? Isn't this all just a ploy to raise money for the Space Force? I understand that impulse, given that our government has already lied us into war on faulty intelligence. But it's important to really interrogate that assumption, because I believe right now, resistance to the idea of UFOs remains on mistrust of the institution, which is in possession of the wide body of evidence surrounding what could be one of the greatest mysteries of our civilization. First, I'll state that it is absolutely not impossible this is an all elaborate psyop for more military funding. But that I believe it's extraordinarily unlikely. Gideon Lewis Krauss of The New Yorker, he recently wrote this story titled, How the Pentagon Started U Taking UFOs Seriously. Now we had him on the show, and I consider it to be the definitive first draft of history as to how exactly those within the five-sided building came to reckon with what was being seen as an airman of, by airmen of all time during the flight. Now, the history of Project Blue Book and early Pentagon attempts to cover up UFOs are well known. And if you don't know, I encourage you to go read about it. But the modern history of disclosure is very important to understand. It begins in 2007, when then Senator Harry Reid of Nevada had a discussion with Robert Bigelow of Skinwalker Ranch. Now, Reid, who has long been fascinated by UFOs and critically had just become the Senate Majority Leader, called up Senator Ted Stevens. Stevens, who was a senator from Alaska, shared a fascination of UFOs with Reid because he was a pilot in the Second World War and he had reported a UFO encounter. It stayed with him for the rest of his life. Now, Stevens and Reid corralled Hawaii Senator Daniel Inouye. Together, they placed a secret $22 million appropriation in a 2008 supplemental appropriations bill to investigate the phenomenon. The Pentagon pushed back hard. They didn't want any of this. Reid basically pulled rank and said, I'm the most powerful person in the Senate, so you're just gonna do it. So from that point forward, the Advanced Aerospace Weapons System Applications Program, or ATIP, was born, which began studying Robert Bigelow's Skinwalker Ranch and all sorts of crazy stuff, like goblins and dog-like creatures. But critically, it also hired Lou Elizondo, who you heard from earlier in 2010. Now, Elizondo had no opinion on UFOs at the time. He was later promoted to the head of the program in 2010, which turned the program exclusively into the study of the national security implications of UAP, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, encounters. It was there that Elizondo became familiar with the encounter he describes in the 60 Minutes clip, and many more, where he came to believe that UFOs are real, but was refused access to the Secretary of Defense repeatedly to brief him on the project and what he found in the Pentagon's files. From there, he was later introduced to Leslie Keen, Keen, a journalist who's been investigating UFOs for many years, by former defense official Christopher Mellon. Now, Elizondo briefed Keen on the program. He then resigned and then led to the now famous 2017 New York Times story, which sparked the UFO renaissance of today. Now, I took you through this torturous history for a reason, so you can understand the Pentagon had zero, absolutely zero interest in letting any of this come out. 
They pushed back against Harry Reid. They tried to bury Lou Elizondo. They never wanted any of this. For it to be a PSYOP, the people in charge have to be in control. And by all accounts of the principal players involved, they did their damnedest to make sure all of this remained a secret from the public forever. Since then, what has happened instead is not disclosure, but resignation to overwhelming fascination from the public, from people like myself. Now, the Pentagon reassigned a high-level civilian to continue Elizondo's work, and since then, a sieve has opened up with awareness amongst the U.S. military that they will not be shunned for reporting to their superiors what they see out there. These incidents have been compiled within the Pentagon. They have been leaked to journalists, some of them, like Jeremy Corbell. And here's the critical part. All the Pentagon is doing is just saying, yeah, that's a real video. It's not that they're disclosing it officially. With over a million service members, of course things are gonna leak. The speed up of information is because of a variety of factors, but it's almost certainly not because of a willful Pentagon effort to put more information out there. The modern history of UFOs instead is a much more hopeful story in which the truth was dragged out. And now that it's out there, they just simply don't know how to control the narrative anymore. As Lewis Krauss himself told us here on Rising, if the Pentagon wanted to raise money, there are a whole lot of easier ways in order to do so. Iraq, Afghanistan, terrorism, Russia, China. There's a lot easier ways to get billions of dollars more in appropriations. Instead, this is a case of people who for a long time tried to deny reality, were then forced to reckon with it, and are now coming clean with us out of necessity. In other words, they're not manipulating us. We are manipulating them. And I did this column because, and I understand it, people are like, why now? Like, why now? Well, if you go and you see the modern history of what happened here, it was basically, this all only happened because Harry Reid was the most powerful person in the Senate, and he was just really interested in UFOs. Okay. And he's like, no, you guys are going to do it. And they pushed back so hard against him. You can read in some of the reporting. He's like, no, you're going to do it. And then he kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And once they had the information, then the sec def, Mattis, he didn't want to hear it. Him and his staff, they're like, no, no. So they went to a journalist, and the moment the New York Times comes out, boom, now you have to talk about it. So it's critical that they're not the ones who are putting this out there. They're not the ones even necessarily who enjoy seeing videos get leaked. But when they do, now instead of lying, they're just like, yeah, it's real. Uh, they don't necessarily like that it's all there. It's just happening because of overwhelming public interest, not the other way around. And I think that's very important for understanding what's happening right it now. It is. And that and that bank yeah. shot, you know, initiated by Harry Reid to then get this study done that then released exactly. things publicly is a really interesting way to kind of normalize, you know, experiences that people have been having for years. Right. And now I think something very, very interesting is there's a lot of trust in, in military and in veterans, mm -hmm. and they're now not afraid to come out publicly anymore to that's actually right. talk about these that's experiences. Right. And I think I think that's a really important step in exploring what these phenomenon are and trying to figure out what this right. technology is. I mean, one of those pilots in 60 Minutes said, say, I saw these things every day. Every day. Think about that. But this is the thing that Commander Fravor and others talked about, which is that they didn't necessarily like that this was happening. They were like, I don't know if I should tell my boss, you know, I mean, what should, what should happen here? Many people, just because of the stigma, they just didn't want to say anything. Now, Po critically, this is why some of those videos from 2019 in the USS Omaha are so important. They're tracking it on radar. Everyone's fascinated. There's one guy is recording it on his cell phone because he can't. He's like, "What the hell is going on here? Like, this is crazy." And you can see exactly then that they don't. They feel comfortable enough to be like, "Look, man, this happened. This happened. Here's the footage." Yeah. Now you know you can talk about the debunkers and all that stuff all you want. But the critical question is this: Is the government trying to play us? But on this, there's no evidence, in my opinion, to support that fact. If you look and discuss with every single principal player involved, the Pentagon got dragged kicking and screaming to disclosure and now just has to admit the truth, which is, yeah, there's a lot of footage that we have which shows stuff like this. What is it? I have no idea. I have some theories, but I have no clue. And just admitting that is, I think, a very critical step, and I think it's important for people out there who are very suspicious to at least understand this this history. This history will help you, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I, I tend to agree with you. I think yeah. the debunkers who are claiming this is a ploy to right. increase Pentagon funding probably haven't looked at Pentagon yeah. funding over the yes. years. When's the last time their budget actually was cut that's, and not increased? I think that's so the funny part, too. They ask for things and get yeah. it. Because you and I live here in D.C. and we know how the appropriate. I'm like, guys, they don't need to make shit up. All right. Like they can do whatever they like. They can ask whatever they want and they're probably still going to get it. Anyway, another discussion for another time. Looking forward to what's on your radar next. Uh, that's next. <laughs>